Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. And on your screen you will see a rough sketch that I did on my sketch paper with uh, some marker pen. And I started out with a basic format of a large circle and then a square and then a horizontal line and I was curious to on the flip side curious to see what it would look like with additional circles um, so it seems like a very messy composition but it was kind of like a warm-up and instead of black uh, my usual black I'm going to use this very very pretty um, I think it's cobalt oh it's thalo blue this is thalo blue and it is as you can see it's kind of watery and I want to do an experiment where I draw the circles at random over the jelly plate and see what kind of effect I will get. And since it's watery, I'm expecting that it will create some interesting textures. So um, I'm, I'm not going to over plan this as usual. It's kind of like a warm-up exercise for design. And so I'm going to get started. So here's my Halo Blue. It's very watery. And I'm going to go ahead and create these. random circles and they do form interesting patterns maybe I will do a Let me see how that looks. Uh, let me change this to a wide angle. There you can see the entire image. So what I'd like to do is, is let this dry. And then I will come in and maybe add some more lines. Um, maybe with a Sharpie or I do have these uh, acrylic paint pens. Uh, these are like a generic brand. These are not the famous uh, Posca. Posca is the more famous brand, but this is like a, a uh, budget brand I got from Amazon. So I'll be back in a few minutes. I will wait for this to dry completely and then I will keep going. So don't go away. Okay, I'm back after a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to do some very fine lines with a Sharpie pen.
These are so faint, I'm not even sure they'll show up, but it's all an experiment. Just to add some texture. Okay, here's a shot of the acrylic paint pen that I'm using. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a, it wasn't expensive. I think it, I paid for the whole box. This is the box. The kind of a no name, it's acrylic paint pen. And uh, I think it was like $15 for the box of um, let's see. It doesn't say how many there are, but let's see, four, eight, nine, ten. There are about 12 of them. And uh, they were inexpensive. And uh, so I'm going to use this blue one and make some. They certainly are more effective than the uh, Sharpie. The, the lines are very clear. Okay, so that's for the the blue. It doesn't even have a name for the color. It's just blue. And then I have here the orange. So this is in keeping with the theme of circles and lines. It's just variations of that. And uh, in fact, the variations can be infinite. So here's a long shot. And so you can see the entire image. I have the blue circles some blue lines on the right side, some orange lines on the left side. So when I do the print, it's all going to be a mirror image. The blue lines will be on the left and the orange lines will be on the right. So again, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm charging up the plate with a light color, maybe a pale yellow or a uh, parchment or a white. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from a short break. And I have here my favorite Lucas acrylic. This is caramel. This is like a yellow ochre. It's not a bright yellow. It's like a mustardy yellow. And then I have here parchment, which is like a creamy beige color. So I will apply some of the parchment. And some of this caramel color. There we go. And I will charge the plate. And 
and this will activate whatever is underneath it will activate the paint markers and the brush work that I had done earlier and I'm not going to worry that the brayer makes marks because uh, it actually makes the piece more interesting. Okay. Then I'm going to add some more of the circles in here. One there, one here, and a few marks here. Again, I'm using my favorite Somerset paper. And making sure that there's good contact between the paper and the plate. And again, since this is a transfer technique, I'm going to leave the paper on for uh, about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe up to half an hour. So uh, I will take another break. Maybe fix myself a cup of coffee. And then I will be right back. Okay, coffee breaks over, and here is the most interesting part of the video, is the reveal. And I uh, tried my best to clear off my work table. Let's see what we got. I think we do have a very interesting result as you can see the paint pens have transferred very well and the textures of the circles are very interesting Here's a shot of the image. Let me see if I can get a, a wide angle. There we go. It's a wide angle shot. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with the result because pretty much everything that I had placed on the plate has transferred. 
and I do like these textures. Uh, I, I know there's a specific name for them. I think it's called dendrites. Here's a close up. It's like the effect when you have oil and water, they kind of fight each other. And uh, that is the texture you get when you use a watered down acrylic paint on the plate. And you can create all kinds of interesting shapes uh, and, and forms. And I'm, I'm just sticking to circles because this is like an exercise in design. So I'm letting this dry and then maybe as a last step, I can add some collage elements. So uh, again, I will be right back. Okay, back from a short break. Uh, I dug through my box of scraps. I have various pieces of odds and ends like tissue, copy paper, leftover stencils. Let me show you my box. My big box of scraps. So I save all of these and sometimes I'll find something that will work, that provide some nice contrast. And sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't look so great. So, you know, it's a hit or miss. But uh, I have this box of scraps which I hold on to. So here are the pieces that I thought might be interesting. Uh, I may change the shapes again because these are just found objects. So you can see the entire image. There we go. Uh, I always like to use this. Um, it's very versatile. So. Go like this. Maybe cut this off. that. This is a leftover stencil and I saved it because it has very interesting textures. It's almost like a door handle. Um, let's see, maybe here. This is also another fragment which I thought might look interesting. Here's a leftover piece.
I think I'm going to stick with that. So I will mount this with my Mod Podge. And when this piece gets saturated with the glue, the uh, tissue just seems to become invisible, which is a very cool feature about mounting tissue paper. But I can create really sharp edges Thank you. 
just uh, squeezing out the bubbles just to ensure that it's a good contact sometimes the paper uh, is rippled and it doesn't stick properly so I'm going to call this done um, I'm quite happy with the result it's not what I expected but it's a pleasant surprise when the images transfer very well so again I'm going to do a close-up and here is the result uh, I do love these oil and water type textures this would be kind of difficult to produce any other way except with the jelly plate so here's the really close-up of the textures I think they're very cool if I may say so myself So that's the close-up and here's the long shot. Again, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of transfer technique. And uh, you can do your own experiments. Uh, have a little fun with some, some scraps of paper and Mod Podge. And it will open up a new universe uh, to you and thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time